So now, Facebook is a private corporation. Facebook is not a coercive institution in and of itself. We can certainly look at it and, you know, some people want to say that there's a division among libertarians between those who look at government power and those who look at uh, corporate power. But it's really, we don't have a problem with uh, corporate power that exists as a result of serving people, as a result of providing goods and services that the people want to consume. Uh, we have a problem with that power when it's, uh, you know, creating a monopoly that prevents competition, for example. You know, there's really just one kind of libertarian who understands that all of these injustices that we see committed by corporations are the result of the coercion of the state behind them. And in a lot of cases, it's difficult to tease that out. In the case of Facebook, how much of it is first to market advantage versus government corporatist advantage versus, you know, the monetary policy, which of course is, yes, part of the government advantage. Because, you know, Facebook went through an ICO that made them, what, tens of billions of dollars that uh, funds the company in a way that a, a startup that doesn't have the, uh, the competitive advantage that Facebook has enjoyed through its corporatism is the ability to consolidate technology and to buy out other companies. Rather than competition, we see consolidation. How much of that would be happening naturally without government intervention? Hard to say, but certainly a lot less. You know, Facebook's big buy uh, of the last few years, Instagram, huge uh, social media network. I believe it's, it's number three, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, something like that. But instead of the, the competition, those corporate entities maintaining their independence, no, they become consolidated. And so Facebook now, uh, and by the way, I am I'm quite relieved to be off Facebook. Although I will say, uh, as much as I am focused on steemit.com, I highly encourage everybody to get involved there, S-T-E-E-M-I-T, steemit.com. It is not quite there as the directory that Facebook represents. We're a long ways from having a true alternative to Facebook as the Facebook. And it's, oh man, I, I kind of want to reminisce now because this goes back to, I was in college. I graduated in 2005. I was at uh, Claremont McKenna, which is one of the first colleges. Remember, Facebook started as a, as a college app for college students. And it was, we actually had a, a book that was sometimes referred to as the Facebook that was like the directory of all the incoming uh, freshman students that would have their senior portraits usually in it. So that function has not yet really been rivaled. I mean, you kind of have LinkedIn, although it's not designed for, you know, the, the lay person. It's, it's more a, a professional networking website. And, and you know, I, I think LinkedIn doesn't really have the potential in the realm of blockchain-based social media that's right now happening already, blooming with Steemit, that uh, is going to displace all the centrally controlled social media networks. With Facebook, we see the problem of these technologies existing in the current government, corporate, quasi-market environment. And that's why this, new, this, this headline from lawandcrime.com doesn't really surprise me. Sure looks like Facebook's lead attorney, uh, Colin Stretch, lied to Congress while under oath. Now, I, I actually misread this headline the first time. Sure looks like Facebook's lead attorney, Colin Stretch, lied to Congress while under oath. See? Let's eat, Grandma. Let's eat, Grandma. Punctuation matters. And in this headline, it, it's just this funny little wording where the guy's last name is Stretch. Colin Stretch lied to Congress while under oath, but it wasn't a stretch. It was a pretty bad outright lie. Facebook's general counsel, Colin Stretch, may not have been completely truthful while under oath when taking questions in front of Senate Judiciary Committee on October 31st, 2017. Stretch was being grilled by Senator John Kennedy the Republican from Louisiana, about the extent of Facebook's ability to profile users on the social media website. Stretch told Kennedy that Facebook had done away with the ability of employees to compile or access profiles on individual users. Here's the transcript. Do you have a profile on me? Senator, uh, if you're a Facebook user, um, we would permit you to be targeted um, with an advertisement based on, on your characteristics and your likes along with other people who share some well, characteristics. Well, let me put it another way. Let's suppose like, your CEO came to you, not you, but 
somebody who could do it in your company, maybe you could, and said, I want to know everything we can find out about Senator Graham. I want to know the movies he likes. I want to know the bars he goes to. I want to know who his friends are. I want to know where, what schools he goes went to. You could do that, couldn't you? <laughs> so, I, and I want to be, it's, it is a very good question. The you answer, can do that, though, can't you? The answer is absolutely not. We have limitations in place on our ability to, to no, no, review no, no. I'm not the personal about your, your, your rules. I'm saying you have the ability to do that. Don't you? Again, Senator, the, the answer is, is no. We're not, we're not you able to. You can't put a to. name to a face to a piece of data? You're telling me that? So we have designed our systems to prevent exactly that, to protect the privacy of our users. I understand, That's but there, you can get around that to find that, that identity, can't you? No, Senator, I cannot. That's your testimony under oath. Yes, it is. Okay. Right. Senator Kennedy, I mean... I, does Facebook really care? You know, this is one of the interesting things about uh, privacy in the age of the Internet, right? That if you're allowing websites to track you, you are voluntarily allowing them to target you. If you are allowing them to display ads that target you on, on websites that you visit, then you are seeding, uh, as in giving up a certain part of your privacy. But it's not like there's anybody on the other end knowing, oh... Well, Adam Kokesh looked at the Vistaprint website today, so we're going to show him a Vistaprint ad on every website that he looks at under Google Ads. I, I, and I don't think in and of itself that the existence of this data is a problem. The problem, again, is, is who controls it and to what end. And they don't really need to violate your privacy to be able to target and manipulate you. And the bigger challenge with Facebook is not the privacy invasion, it's the manipulation of the conversation. It's the squashing of libertarian voices. It's the disconnecting people who should be connected. It's all the things that I've experienced where people say, I clicked follow and see first, Adam, and I never see your posts in my feed. Same thing with YouTube. I mean, with YouTube, for me now, it's insane. I have still nearly 230,000 subscribers, and new videos get a few hundred views each. Used to be a few 10,000 views each, when I had much smaller numbers than that for subscribers. So there's something fishy going on. I actually sent uh, a, a couple tweets to YouTube, very polite, and just, what am I doing wrong here, guys? And uh, no response, despite the fact that I got an email. Oh, geez, don't get me going. I could bitch about YouTube all day. From the CEO of YouTube saying that, you know, please read our blog. And one of the things she's proud of is how responsive she is to people now. I'm not expecting any response to this. So, Stretch's assuredness. Oh, so it goes back to, back to Kennedy and Stretch. Senator Kennedy, I understand, but... You can get around that to fr find that identity, can't you? Stretch, no, Senator, I cannot. That's your testimony under oath. Yes, it is. Now, he might actually, you know, rereading re this, I'm thinking, no, Senator, I cannot. As in, no, I'm just the lawyer. I don't have access to that stuff. I can't sign on to that. He said, no, Senator, I cannot. He didn't say nobody at Facebook could do this possibly. Stretch's assuredness puzzled many observers at the time. Other called Stretch out for those allegedly misleading comments. Even Vanity, for, Vanity Fair wrote approvingly of Kennedy's intensive question of Stretch. Now it appears Stretch's critics were correct in their estimation of his allegedly evasive comments. So did he lie, or was he just being evasive in this? A little noticed late Thursday report in the Wall Street Journal notes, a small group of Facebook Incorporated employees have permission to access users' profiles without the users finding out. Now, I... Oh, I have a little bit of personal experience with this because I've been contacted by such a person who looked at my stuff and said, man, all of your posts are getting flagged. Yeah, that's all I got out of that. Yet any time a Facebook employee accesses a colleague's personal profile, the colleague is notified through what is often referred to within the company as a Sauron alert, a reference to the all-seeing eye in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, people familiar with the matter say. Similar protections don't exist for the 2 billion plus Facebook users who don't work for the company. Law and Crime reached out to Facebook for comment on the story. The space will be updated if and when response is received. 
Congressional perjury can result in up to five years in prison. Such prosecutions are exceedingly unlikely in the United States. And giving Mr. Stretch's weasel words in this highly unlikely as well. So you can uh, you can look up the video of all the various Facebook testimonies in, uh, to the Senate recently, but I think you can find better things to do with your time than just pour over how evil central planners can be, especially when they have massive tools like government or Facebook at their fingertips. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.